and to poo poo any kind of animal on its side. Yeah. Any evidence would not give them a, a proper hearing. It's quite a frustration, really. And I stopped um, investigating for a number of years, and then probably around about 90, sort of 2002, there was a big article in the Daily Mail about this amazing experiment that was held up north in a place called Skoll. And this was a group of people who were investigating it. They worked actually spiritualists as such, um, although the spiritualists did um, attend these skull experiments. Um, it was organised to run by uh, a guy called Robin Capone and Sandy Capone were part of this. And between them, they had over 60 years' experience in investigations into paranormal phenomena. But uh, Robin Capone was always interested in survival. Basically, he got together a group of people in about 1994. Uh, over a five-year period, they sat on a regular basis for over a year in what they call the Skull Hole, which is, um, he had a farm up north. And in the cellar, uh, he had, basically, it was, a, it was a cellar, which he painted out in a dark blue. But he had the one door, and they would sit on a regular basis in what they called the Skull Hole, to try and communicate to the other side. Um, they had two trance mediums there, um, Diana and Alan Bennett, who were amazingly good mediums, trance mediums. And you'll see on the, uh, the DVD, these people went into deep trance and communication coming through. The phenomenon that was going on over this five year period uh, got them to the attention of the SPR. And because it was physical, the SPR thought, well, this is really something interesting to investigate. Sorry. Oh, sorry. The SPR was formed in 1882 by professors and doctors, people who are interested in the subject. Is there any evidence for survival? It sort of came about because you had the, um, you know, Charles Darwin uh, coming out, basically. So a lot of people, Darwinian theory killed God or killed any concept of an afterlife theory. And Although he was not an atheist, Charles Darwin, um, it did, if you like, upset a lot of people. A lot of people in the West felt a little bit abandoned from that, you know, whereas Eastern philosophers and Eastern religions, they, they knew a lot more about spirituality and survival and shamelessly type things than we did in the West. So the SPR wanted to, if you like, look at evidence rather than sort of flake. Reporting the media, etc. They wanted to see if any, any any scientific basis for these case studies. And case studies could be uh, poltergeist activity, it could be investigation of reincarnation, um, uh, hauntings, uh, and they would also investigate uh, physical mediumship and mental mediumship. <coughs> look at it on a very scientific basis to make sure there wasn't enough fakery and trickery there, because there was a lot of um, of that going on. suffered bereavement are very vulnerable people and people can take advantage of those people for monetary gain and the rest of it too. So the SPR was formed by scientists who were what we would call free-minded. I wouldn't use the word open-minded, but free-minded. They would look at um, each individual case on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and they were professors, doctors, men of real uh, academic backgrounds. So these weren't flaky people not people that were easy, easily conned, if you like. And the SPR in its archives has thousands of cases of investigations, etc., which are really um, very impressive. The SPR members, there's probably about 350, 400 members, but there's always arguments between SPR members because they had what we call the reductionists, which do not believe in any of this whatsoever. They don't believe in the concept of science at all. And then you have the survivalists who do basically believe that the evidence is strong enough for survival and they're always having arguments. And Professor David Fontana, who passed away a couple of years ago, has more letters after his name than the, than the alphabet. He was a very, very intelligent guy. And he was a local man, actually. He lived in Cardiff, um, in his home. And he, um, in the 90s, investigated the 
kind of folder class codes that you may or may not be aware of. But there's a very significant sort of folder class codes, which I'll very briefly just touch on if you like. Um, there was a, a warehouse, um, it was called Noah Services mm -hmm. in Cardiff, and the owners were experiencing phenomenal folder class phenomena, which did get some attention over a less of eight time time. But effectively what was happening was they were going into the factory in the end and they were finding the little washer that washes the little floats that were used in carburetors, which have these two little needles in the float, embedded in the ceiling. Uh, the owner, Fred, would be working over the stairs and all of a sudden a stone from out of the corner would be thrown at him, but it would never hit him, just miss him. And he thought there's someone messing about it. So he picked up the stone and threw it right back in the same corner and immediately it came right back at him and there's no one there. Uh, money would appear uh, just out of thin air, literally, like five pound notes, pound coins. He'd be drinking a cup of tea and all of a sudden a pound coin would just drop into his mug. Which is wonderful, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's a very friendly um, folder class, which is not always the case, yeah. of course. You know. um, so Professor Fontana did investigate the case, and he was there at night on his own, and he picked up the stone and threw it into the corner, and immediately it came back. We had other phenomena there as well. And the Discovery Channel did produce a short documentary on the subject, um, which was very successful. The previous case was the uh, famous Enfield, Morris Gross and uh, Guy Lyon Faith uh, were the investigators for that. And there's lots of documentation on the internet, on that on YouTube, you can download it. Could, excuse me, could you speak up just a little of bit? Course, Sometimes try, your yes, voice I, drops. I do speak quite um, softly, I'm yeah. afraid. I will try and speak up. Thank you. Um, the Skull Experiment is probably the most significant um, investigation that the SPR, the SPR has ever undertaken. When it got to the ears of the SPR, Professor David Fontana, Montague Keane and Arthur Ellison uh, basically went along over a two year period and investigated all the phenomena, what we call the skull hole. They even brought along um, a member of the, uh, the magic circle to see if this could be duplicated by fakery and trickery. And the chap in the magic circle put up his hand and said, this is impossible, this cannot be done. It was done under scientific conditions so people were searched before they went into the uh, cellar and searched when they came out. Um, the doors were locked. The phenomena was not a physical phenomena. They had um, spirit lights, they had uh, photographic evidence. It was done in the dark, but you had light phenomena. And when this light phenomena was going on, Montague Keane and also Professor Montana and also uh, Dr. Ruby Sheldrake you could actually see the outline of transparent spirits. So they were real things that could be seen. And the physical phenomena will be explained, et cetera, on the DVD. Um, it finished in, uh, the experiment finished in 1999. It doesn't say on the DVD why it finished. And there were a number of reasons why that were given. But basically there was a spirit, they've got a spirit team on the other side, they've got that side trying to communicate this physical dimension here. And the reason given was that the, what was TV was cutting into, but it was interfering with the space-time continuum, which may or may not be true, we don't know. There could have been other reasons. Um, I won't go on much longer now because um, a lot of this information is actually reproduced on the DVD and they talk about it in quite detail. It's a bit of a long tape, it's about an hour and 26 minutes. But I'd like to afterwards talk about what you think about it. Some people may find it a little bit spooky. But the evidence, and what's <coughs> so important about this is that this is real, what we call scientific proof, that we do survive physical death, that mind is separate from brain, that all of us and every one of us survives yeah. physical death. And the general public have probably had no idea that the skull experiment it, it ever took place. We talk about the skull experiment, and why people are thinking, well, there's no proof for that, there's no evidence. Well, there is, and it's pretty strong evidence. But I won't say any more, but um, later on after the DVD, you can ask me some questions, and I can tell you how it's progressed since the experimentation, what's happening today, if you like. Mm. So why don't you watch it?